for the second Star Trek The Next Generation film, Star Trek First Contact, released in 1996, writers Brandon Braga and Ronald D. Moore had basically a blank slate to work with, unlike Star Trek Generations before it, where they had essentially a list of studio requirements to include in that movie. This time they could do anything they wanted to with Star Trek First Contact. So the development of this film is actually very interesting as a result because the development of the story went through numerous iterations. Now, ultimately, it was always going to be about a Borg story, though one draft also included the character Q at one point. The Borg were considered the most memorable and terrifying antagonists on Star Trek The Next Generation and were therefore seen as ideal for a cinematic outing. Time travel was also going to be part of the story. The initial concept was that the Borg would travel back in time to medieval Europe. The Borg's plan was to prevent the birth of modern civilization by preventing the Renaissance. The film would be called Star Trek Renaissance and would see the crew of the Enterprise fighting the Borg in their HQ, a partially assimilated 15th century castle. Data would be an apprentice to Leonardo da Vinci, and the film would also see them fight the Borg with swords. I'm really glad this film was never made. The writers ultimately felt the story was too campy, and to be honest, it sounds a lot like the comedic TNG episode Cupid, where the crew are transported to Sherwood Forest in the past and Picard plays Robin Hood. The next version of the script was much closer to the final product, though still quite rough around the edges. Now, Brandon Braga liked the idea of seeing the Borg trying to stop the birth of Star Trek as we knew it, which is to say first contact between humans and Vulcans following the warp flight of Zephyr Cochrane which would lead to the eventual creation of warp-capable starships and the United Federation of Planets. The Borg would travel back to the 21st century to stop Zephram Cochrane's first warp flight. The story would take place in two locations, the Enterprise, where the Borg had taken it over, and the planet's surface, just like the final movie, except for a few significant differences. Firstly, the Earth-based action would take place in the city of Resurrection and not Bozeman, Montana. Secondly, Picard would be the one on the surface and Riker would be on the Enterprise, the exact opposite situation to the final film. With Zephram Cochran injured in a Borg attack, Picard would be forced to take on his identity and take his place, pretending to be Cochran and completing the warp flight. But this seemed too similar to the Deep Space Nine episode Past Tense, where Sisko had to pretend to be revolutionary Gabriel Bell. Picard would have a romance with a woman named Ruby, who was a local photographer. In the final draft of Star Trek First Contact, Ruby would be a holographic character. Meantime, Riker fought the Borg on the Enterprise. The story was close enough to the final version, but lacked a certain something. So the decision was made to flip the scenario, to flip the action, and make it so that Picard is the one fighting the Borg on the Enterprise, and Riker is in charge of the action on Earth, and working with Geordi LaForge to assist Cochrane in completing his warp flight. This made much more sense due to Picard's personal history with the Borg. He had, of course, been assimilated six years earlier and was forced to commit atrocities against the Federation, and so this made the story much more personal. Picard would be motivated by rage and a quest for revenge. The writers also liked the idea of making Zephram Cochrane a flawed man, an alcoholic and a bit of a jerk. This made him seem more realistic and relatable, because after all, history has a habit of embellishing stories about important historical figures and making them seem larger than life, and more perfect and heroic than they actually were. Cochrane's flaws made him a compelling character to usher in a new age for humanity. First Contact is, in my view, one of the best examples of a very complete and well-rounded science fiction action horror movie. It's dark without being edgy dark. It's got an excellent balance of action-adventure, but with great character moments. There's some good humour in there without being over the top, The visual effects are excellent, they still hold up today. 
The direction by Jonathan Frakes is superb. The music by Jerry Goldsmith is outstanding. It's among my favorite Star Trek themes. The pacing and editing of the film is just perfect. And although the film primarily focuses on the main characters of Picard and Data, the rest of the cast also get plenty of screen time and important stuff to do in the story. I rate First Contact as one of the 10 best sci-fi movies of the 1990s. This was the film where the TNG cast really got to strike out on their own, moving on from being in the shadow of the original series, which they were to a certain degree in Star Trek Generations. The film saw the introduction of the new Sovereign Class Enterprise E, replacing the Galaxy Class Enterprise D from the TV series, which was of course destroyed in Star Trek Generations. And we also got the updated Starfleet uniforms, which would be introduced on Deep Space Nine shortly thereafter. There are other significant elements. This would be the first time that Worf would appear in a TNG film after joining Deep Space Nine. His introduction in the film is one of the highlights for me, while battling the Borg Cube on the USS Defiant during a fantastic fleet battle. It's a really nice crossover. There's another great crossover with Star Trek Voyager in the form of the Enterprise E version of the Emergency Medical Holographic Doctor, played again by Robert Picardo. And there's a great throwback to the TNG episode, The Big Goodbye, with a Dixon Hill holodeck sequence. The Borg Queen was also introduced, and Alex Krieger's performance is wonderful, although the concept of a Borg Queen was controversial among some fans, because some people felt that the Borg should purely be a collective hive mind without any centralized controller. Anyway, the Borg in this film were redesigned to be given an almost vampire quality to them. They're truly terrifying again. James Cromwell plays the likable yet eccentric, somewhat dysfunctional Zephram Cochran, and the scenes with him on Earth make for a more light-hearted contrast to the darker conflict above on the Borg-controlled Enterprise. I think Patrick Stewart puts in one of his best performances, the scene of course with Lily in the Observation Lounge, where he delivers his famous the line must be drawn here speech, and then smashes the Enterprise models. It's just so chilling and powerful. Years of pent-up frustration and animosity directed at the Borg, built up and expressed in a very uncharacteristic emotional outburst for Picard. But that's what makes it so human. As great as First Contact was, however, it is a watershed moment for the Trek franchise, in my opinion, and I've spoken about this before. Specifically, it marked the beginning of the decline in quality of the golden era of Star Trek. Sure, there were still great episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and Enterprise after 1996, but First Contact was very much a high watermark moment. The consistency in the quality of Star Trek was never quite the same after 1996, and the films only went downhill from there. 1998's Star Trek Insurrection and 2002's Star Trek Nemesis just couldn't replicate the magic of First Contact. And the J.J. Abrams movies don't even feel like they're from the same franchise, to be honest. They're so drastically different as just bland action sci-fi movies. First Contact is just magic in the sense that it really managed to strike the right balance between clever storytelling, drama and action without overdoing the action. I mean, the action in this film, it really serves the story. Whereas in subsequent Star Trek movies, it was the opposite. The action came first over the quality of the story. Anyway, I envy anyone who has never watched Star Trek First Contact because now you get to see it for the first time. Whereas... I've watched this film so many times, I know every single line of dialogue in every scene. I've kind of ruined it for myself, actually. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Star Trek First Contact. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.